So my lab is interested in circadian rhythms and biological clocks uh, and how they play a role in the progression of endocrine disorders, particularly disorders affecting metabolism and reproduction. So we've recently determined that normally within mammalian physiology, circadian clocks or biological oscillators, which are present in nearly every cell and tissue in the body, are synchronized or coordinated so that the liver clock, the brain clock, and the ovary clock are all timing in such a way that they are coordinated relative to each other. And what we've determined is that in a disease like polycystic ovary syndrome, which is marked by a significant elevation in, in serum testosterone levels. So these women have reduced fer fertility and re reduced reproductive function, in part as a result of excess androgen, causing disruption of ovarian physiology. And what we found is that in an animal model of this disorder, where we, where we gestationally produce elevated testosterone levels, in the adult female offspring, we find that these individual circadian clocks in the cells of, say, the liver, the kidney, the ovary, and the hypothalamus, which are normally very tightly synchronized and coordinated, are dispersed relative to each other in terms of the peak of their gene expression, and thus the peak of their physiological function. And this is what we see, and is very akin to what we see in things like chronic jet lag and rotating shift work, which are also known to cause a significant reduction in fertility and reproductive function in women. So we think that a common feature of infertility, perhaps, as a result of these diseases, is a disrupted phase coordination among the various clocks in this system. So you might like to think of it as if the uh, orchestra no longer has a conductor. The individual tissues, the flute, the clarinet player, and the tuba are all playing their own song, out of phase and without a rhythmic coordination, so that the song they produce sounds like garbage. I think for us, the real interest is trying to find ways to, to determine if the clock can be used as a target for, for sort of novel therapeutics for various disorders. If we find that clock desynchrony is a sort of constant feature of these various diseases, it might be possible to ameliorate some of these symptoms with drugs that are known to reorganize and coordinate the timing of the clock. I think we're a long ways from that in terms of uh, uh, bench to bedside and translational medicine, but I think we're getting closer and closer and, and you see more and more papers coming out sort of understanding that the clock is involved in not, not just reproductive disorders, but certainly in obesity and diabetes. And so I think we're finding more and more that both endocrine and metabolic diseases are intricately involved with or, or affected by the clock and vice versa. Uh, and I was particularly interested in coming here in, in part because of the colleagues I knew I would have, uh, particularly in this division. My chief, uh, Steve Hamas, uh, is an outstanding researcher in the area of prostate cancer, but also in andronology and uh, testosterone function in females. So there was a strong uh, interest in sort of having someone who has very much the same interest research-wise here. Um, but of, of course, the infrastructure, the medical center uh, is fantastic. Um, and I originally came from the Northeast, so certainly it was a good fit for me being closer to family uh, that I could return up here. And, and, uh, and, and I just think it's a great area.